Hey guys, Sarah Mike here with Lively Lakes Fly Fishing and today what I'm going to do, it's not a fishing video, it is a tying video and it's one of the, the patterns that we get a lot of questions about and finally um, getting around to um, showing people how, how to tie it. It's called the Iron Mike Fly and this fly has a special history um, with me and uh, you know the gang of buddies that I used to go to camp with season after season for the trout opener every year and I'm, I'm talking way back to our, our bait fishing days you know the same 12 to 14 sometimes more than that would we'll go up to my camp in Emporium and we would go out on the streams for the first day and everybody always seemed to have a unique bait that they brought I remember macaroni and cheese, I remember different combinations of different things and every year was something the crazy that, that was going to be the, the bait of that year. So when we got into the fly fishing, um, more so, same thing, it would be a new fly every year. So long story short, um, I came up with this pattern because we used to uh, bait fish with salt and minnows a lot and just kill the trout, you know, digging the little salt and minnows in front of their face when we were younger. And I wanted to make a fly that replicated a little shiner salt a minnow, and that's where I came up with the iron mic. And ironically, um, the very first time we, I never forget it, even though it was, oh, geez, probably eight years ago, um, my friend Jared, we were over on the, um, the project, it was the day before trout season, um, in Emporium, right behind the, there's one just right up past the high school at the fairgrounds. So we were on that project, and he had on this new pattern called the Iron Mike, and sure enough, he cut a giant brown, and uh, that was one of the, the things that tipped off this um, little pattern, so. I'll well, fish a little further down the stream and caught up with Jared, and it seems like he's got a doozy on. Yeah, there's a little pole bend going on there, Jared. Jared, you're kind of good on a Mike's minnow. Fancy <laughs> oh yeah, that's a nice fish. You need a neck guy. Is that that minnow? Yeah. Oh, that's why you said Mike's minnows. I wonder. Look at that. He doesn't like me. Good deal. Get a release put back in. What do you Let's think? Get your minnow on video here, Mike. Your little minnow you came up with. These wraps all up now. We did a couple twists and turns. And... There's a nice picture of what we're fishing with. Mike threw this together the other day, experimenting with some different patterns he wanted to come up with, but we'll get it out of his mouth. And... No, that's just a look at the minnow we've been doing really well on. Uh, just kind of looks like a salted or a little shiner, but they're really hammering it, that's for sure. Big picture of this nice trout. Big smile from the fisherman. I want one more, Jared, real quick. We'll get him back in the water. Smile. Got it. Let her down. Go and release him. Nice fish, Jared. Congratulations. And now we can't keep them in stock. It works great on um, stocked fish. It works great on the wild trout. Um, uh, a lot of steelhead guys um, have a lot of success with it. So we asked, we were asked several times to, um, what what's the recipe for it? Um, how do you tie it? So that's what I'm going to do today, and um, I'm going to go over the material list. And I'm sure Ben, when he edits this, will put a, a written list in as well. But I'll show you the materials real quick. Then we'll get to tying. But um, tremendous little, you know, it, it can be classified as a streamer. Even it's really small, um, simple to turn over, and you can fish it on a two weight rod if you you wanted to. It's not nothing big and gaudy, but extremely effective. So um, I hope you enjoy the the video. And um, if you have any comments about it, leave them below. Thanks.
Okay, I'm just going to start off by um, zooming in right there on that is a little iron mic. And it's a very simple pattern to tie. Not many, uh, not many things involved in tying it, but when it gets wet, and you can't judge this fly by what it looks like when it's dry, because when it gets wet, it just, it looks so nice and has a lot of movement in the water and it's a really nice fly. So I'm just going to quickly, whoops, I bought my daughter's lottery tickets earlier. <laughs> Didn't even know that was in there. Quickly go over the materials here. They were both losers, by the way. Um, so we have Strung Marabou, and that's white. Okay, we have Mallard Flank. Uh, let's go, we'll go down this way. Uh, our beads, I like to put a heavy bead on this, so we're going to use the Down and Dirty Tungsten, that's the silver 4.0s. The Ice Wing Fiber, super important in this, uh, this pattern. And you can see I'm using the Pearl because I'm going to be doing a white iron mic. Um, the, the hooks we like to tie on are the 472s, uh, this will be a size 8. And lastly, that is called Pearl Pearlescent, um, and it's a flat tinsel, and it comes in narrow, medium, and wide, and that is the, the narrow. So, And for the thread, I'm just going to be using a, a 6 aught black, black thread. So, um, let's uh, see if I can zoom this out a little more. Um, let's go ahead and get to the get to the tying. All I did so far was put the bead on and uh, bent the barb, pinch the barb down. And what you're going to do is you're going to start off, and you're just going to give the the entire hook shank, you know, clean back to where you pinch that barb, a nice little little thread base, and it doesn't have to be heavy at all. Then I'm kind of come back forward like three or four wraps, snip that off, and then I'm going to take one strand of the marabou, okay? And you can, you know, fight it and, you know, deal with this front part that's no good, but I actually trimmed that off, um, just so I'm not working with so much material. So, I just take a little poof, okay, and I'm going to start about mid-shank, and I'm wrapping pretty tight, okay, and I'm going to go back to just where that hook starts to bend, and I like a nice, you know, pretty big, pretty big fluffy tail on it. Um, doesn't have to be quite that long, because you might get a lot of short strikes if you are. Just uh, shorten that up, and then I'm going to take this extra marabou up here, snip it off, just tidy that fly up a little bit, and just kind of, kind of wrap that in. And you're going to have, um, you can see, and I'll use my scissors here. You're going to have from here down to here a pretty big hump, but you can make you can make that up building that body with the ice wing fiber. So, you know, if you see that and it's not perfectly, you know, tapered or anything like that, don't don't worry about it. Um, the next step is I like to incorporate some barring in the tail. And how I do that is I take a flank feather and I actually strip it backwards like this. Okay? Just cut out the like that, and just that little wee notch, you're going to snip that, I'm going to try to do it on camera here, just snip that little wee notch off, then you're going to take that feather, and you're going to go the other way, and you're going to slide that forward again, okay, and you can see, I have a nice feather, which is a little wee V cut out, and I'm going to leave some of the stem on, you know, so it grabs, but I'm going to cut Cut that garbage away, and I'll show you this again. There's what it looks like. Now, I'm just going to take that, and I'm going to center it, that stem of that feather, on that shank, just like that. And so when this gets wet, that barring is going to mix in with this marabou, and it's going to make a really nice, nice blend. So I'm going to wrap that back, and try to keep it centered. I'll spin it while I still can. And you can see I have that center. So half's going to lay down the one side, half down the other side. Um, make sure it's nice and secure in there. 
and right now it looks like looks like that. Okay, pretty good looking looking fly so far. And when this gets wet, that that barring mixes in with there, and it looks absolutely stunning. So um, the next part is probably the trickiest part of this fly, and it's not even that bad. This ice wing fiber is a little bit um, difficult to to dub with. And here I have a piece. It comes in eight inch fibers and I probably pulled out all eight inches and I'm just going to wrap it on my thread. And I actually like using black thread because it gives like that kind of translucent look or um, transparent I want to say. Yeah, translucent. And you can kind of see through it and you know it looks like I don't know, different markings on the minnow. So what I like to do here though and it's going to look messy. Do not worry about that. That's perfectly fine. When this gets wet, it is a butte. So I'm going to actually twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist, wrap. Okay? And you're going to do that the whole way until you get to the back. Twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist. Now I'm going to come back forward. Twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist. And I ran out, but you can see I'm building a nice body. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, add just a little bit more, and you'll get the hang of it till you're getting exactly what you what you need. Um, and this stuff is a mess, so I would suggest you do it somewhere. You know that you have a, a tying room or something. Twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist, wrap, twist. And I'm going to do that the whole way up to the the bead. Now, if you want to tidy that up some, you certainly can. I see I actually have one under the hook there. Um, or you can just kind of pluck it off. I actually like to leave some some loose fly fibers on there, but you can see now I have a nice nice little body on there. Okay. The next step is you're going to go back to this, the pearl, the ice wing fiber. And this step's a little bit different. You're going to pull out a little bit of a, a thicker piece, but it doesn't have to be, you know, the whole eight inches long. So I have, you know, nice, nice little chunk here, and I'm going to kind of, you know, just keep smoothing this back and forth until it makes a nice little, you know, even, even, I don't know, like a cylinder. Um, and I'm going to line it up, and I want it to be as long as the fly. So I'm going to hold over the garbage can. I'm going to snip that front nice and even, right even with the bead. Now I'm going to stretch it out to the back of the fly and I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to cut that off. Okay. Now I have a nice nice piece, I don't know, probably three inches long. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to try to twist my vise here so you can see a little, little better. And I'm going to lock that in with one two wraps that way. Okay. Then I'm going to turn it and I want to go one, two wraps that way. Now, if you ever tied spinners, um, like a sulfur spinner or anything, right now this looks like the world's largest spinner. Okay. You can kind of straighten those up. If you want, you can trim, trim the ends off, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take these and I'm going to fold them directly back and just fold them back across the body just like that make it nice and tight and I'm just going to do a couple wraps back to build a nice little head and it will actually help hold those wings we'll call them wings against the, against the body so when this gets wet everything is going to suction or stick or fold back, lay back against that body. Okay, We're almost done here already. This is a quick fly. You can actually crank these out pretty quick. Now, I do like to add barring down the, down the sides as well. And if you were lucky enough um, in your marabou to get nice long feathers like this, you can. There's two options here. You can take a group of, I don't know, 18, 20 strands, snip it off, and you know, put it down each side. Um, but if you don't have that, you're going to have to, you know, cut out that little V again, which I'm going to do really quick here. 
Take another feather. I'm actually prepping it right now. I'm going to snip it. Okay. Fold forward just like I did on the other. I don't know if that was in the in the video. But there, I'm going to take that. Come on, focus. Okay. And I cut out that little V. I'm going to trim that up. Trim it up over the over the garbage can and right there. Now, what I want to do is take that and lay it right on the top of that fly. Okay? And I'm going to take a couple more thread wraps, lock that in with two or three wraps. It doesn't take much. And here's here's a little secret so that doesn't pull out. This little tab right here, uh, pick it up. And take take a wrap or two in front of that then you can snip that snip that off okay just like that now if your fly looks you know kind of big and kind of bulky and you're thinking to yourself I'm probably not doing this right you are because this fly dry does not look anything like it does when it's when it's wet these wings or these uh, these feathers are going to fold right back against this body and mixed with that, um, the ice wing fiber, you have the most beautiful little, it, it really does, it looks like a little shiner swimming through the water. Okay, then the last step is um, you're going to take a, about a foot of that pearlescent, and again, this was the, the narrow. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this in a video, it's so, so thin, but um, yeah, it's picking it up. You're going to take that, you're going to tie three or four wraps in, snip the little bit that's hanging over the front. You're going to bring your thread back up to behind the bead. Okay, so right now I'm going to hold on to this. And there you can see I just have like a little, little black collar at the front. But I'm going to cover that up with this um, pearlescent. And it takes it takes several wraps to do and it does not have to be perfect you just want that uh, front head to have a little bit of extra shine and as you can see it's covering all that black thread up nicely and I'm just going to build it up and I'm, I'm keeping some tension on this Okay, I don't know how many wraps that was at least a dozen and you can see it has a nice little head now I'm going to hold that and I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to lock it in one, two, now I'm going to pull this back and get a wrap or two in front of that, one, two, okay, just like that, snip it off and you can save your extra for another fly or, or whatever you would like to do. Um, so now you can either, one, whip finish it and here's what I like to do with this fly, and, and you'll see why. And I have never had one fall apart. But I like to take and get a half hitch in there. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear it on the video, but if you pull on it, it actually snaps in. Hopefully it's focused. Yeah, it's pretty focused. And it locks in behind that bead. And I do that three times. One, that was one. Snap it in. I could actually hear it sink down in there. And that pulls everything nice and tight in, in behind that bead. And like I said, I do three half hitches and have never had that fall apart. You can whip finish it and it does the exact same same trick, but just uh, snip that off. And there is a look at the, the iron mite. Now, I'm going to stick a wet one, and it's kind of getting, getting a little bit dry now, but I'm going to stick a wet one in the, in the vise so you can kind of see the difference between what it looks like um, dry. And then, yeah, I wet this before I started, started tying. But you can see that really, really shrinks, shrinks down, but uh, you can see that nice, nice barring, the nice shine, shine on the back. And there it is, an extremely effective fly. And um, 
a lot of people must think so because we have a lot of trouble keeping this fly in stock and we um, we t get them tied um, in 80 dozen batches at a time so that's that's quite a few few flies and we always seem to seem to run out like I said it's excellent on the stockies excellent on the steelhead and even a good little streamer for for the wild trout so I hope you enjoyed the video if you have any comments or questions um, leave them down below and if you haven't um, signed up for our page or um, please give it a like or please subscribe and it would be very much appreciated and until next time um, thank you for watching